Welcome back everybody. So guys here we need to talk about the React, a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. Later on in this series you will be having a lot of uh, tutorials, a lot of videos about the React. So you will be learning about the React in more detail, in more depth. So no problem but this is just an intro video so you need to know about what is React and why you're going to learn the course. So if you just know about the Angular, that will be really cool if you know about the Angular because a lot of things in your React are just like Angular. So, but one thing uh, when we talk about the Angular, it's the V of the MVC. If you know about MVC, it's the V of the MVC. So here we can build UIs, the user interfaces, like uh, different kind of elements. You can just create here. Uh, React is component based. You can see that uh, declarative React makes it painless to create interactive UIs. Design simple views for each state in your application, and React will efficiently update and render just the right component when your data changes. This is the speciality of the React. Declarative views makes your code more predictable and easy to debug. Component based, it's completely component based instead of being a page based app programming or, or core programming, it's the component based programming. So, build encapsulated components that manage their own states, uh, then compose them to make complex UIs. Since component logic is written in JavaScript instead of templates, you can easily pass rich data through your app and keep it stayed out of the DOM. So, this is the basic React. Another thing you can see that learn once and write anywhere. There is a simple component example. Uh, React component implements a render method that takes input data and returns what to display. This is how basic React work. You can see that this is a hello message we are having here and we are applying that hello message to a div and we are returning this div to the specific component when the component has been called. So the stateful components applications different kind of things you'll be talking about we'll be talking about the re in, inside the react now interestingly you can see that the result here the hello taylor there we are just getting the seconds the priv state dot second plus one and it just giving us the because of the you know uh, the set interval if you just know about the function the javascript method the set interval method so by this we are getting uh, the set interval and we are just getting 1000 we are changing this on 1000 milliseconds and we are just uh, adding one uh, plus one with each of them and there it's getting increased a kind of to-do list and here you can see that very less coding but we have the to-do so just click on add and then you can add that in its way so this is how things are happening by using this simple method an application they're just giving us an example of a complete application by doing nothing big uh, in the same way type some markdown here and whatever and you can see that the markdown is uh, actually changed this is how you can just ex edit the external plugin so I think you know about the basics of the uh, the react the the way to create the user interfaces an interesting thing about react i just want to tell you that facebook even facebook uses the react actually facebook made the react so facebook developers made the react and facebook is using react and uh, uh, for the notification uh, when you just click on the notification button you can see the notification blinked and popped up so these things comes because of the react and they works in a way of react So guys, here in this class, we're just uh, setting up the, uh, the environment for the React.js. So the very first thing, what we just need for the React.js, setting up the React.js, we just need the Node.js and the NPM for interpreting the, the React.js results to the browser and to running the local host for the client side language, the, uh, the server, the local server, we just need the Node.js and the NPM. And we, just, we will be needing some few global packages and a few plugins i'm just going to guide you how and from where we're just going to get all these things first of all we just need to go to the node.js node.js.org okay now we got there now what more we just need to do is to click on the recommended for most users if i just click there i'll be getting the file downloaded here it started downloading and in some seconds it will be completed and there we just got the file downloaded and where it is if i just go there we can see that the node.js 6.1 and edc i'm just gonna run this up okay uh close this and click on next button yeah i already have the node.js setup installed so i'm just clicking on remove first time and removing this and then we'll be installing it by our own in its class yeah 
computing space will come in while editing install edc it's just gonna yeah uh, uninstall the node.js setup this dialog box removing files removing other stuff all the things yeah we just got deleted the node.js just click on the finish button it's gone now what i'm just doing i'm just going to the you know the just double clicking on the setup and now now just click on next button and now i i just need to accept the terms in a license agreement just click on next button the file location the location is okay just click on next button again now i just want all the things like the edit path online documentation the very important thing is the node.js runtime and the node npm package manager click on next button and click on install button now yeah uh, validating install generating copying files updating component registration copying new files and the other stuff it's just getting copied all things yeah it's done it's just asking click to finish click the finish button looks inside your setup i'm just clicking on finish button now i just need to check that if really i just got the node.js node.js yeah i got this one okay cool now the second thing I just need to do is to just uh, install the global packages from the NPM. So I'm just going to the SCMD. And why I'm just going to the CMD? This is a rule for the Node.js. Okay. You can use the Node.js CMD too. I'm just clicking on CMD. And now I got this. Now what I just need to do, I just need to type the NPM. When I just type NPM, that means I'm clearly calling for the Node.js interpreter. Okay. Now, NPM, and now I just want to install something. This is a rule. If you just want to work on an NPM, you just need to know more about, if you just want to know more about the NPM, you just need to search it over the Google because absolutely in our course, we're not going to talk about the NPM a lot more or Node.js a lot more. We're just going to setting up the uh, Node.js for the uh, React.js. Then we'll be working on React.js later on. Also, if you just want to know about the uh, uh, the CMD or the command for the CMD you just need to visit google.com and then you can get more information about it for now I'm just gonna install the things if you just want to install something in an NPM you just need to type the NPM space install and then the thing you just want to install and because this one is the global package so the G I'm just gonna download the Babel the Babel here Babel okay this one is a global package as well ins install so just enter and it's getting installed you can see that the rollback failed edc now i got the package installed okay what more i just need to do i just need to do it now i just want to install the same thing with a little change the cli and here no space but this oh okay button break and now it's gonna install it in a few minutes yeah rollback failed opportunity see load fetch nodes it's getting installed Then we'll be needing to do some more things, some more stuff, absolutely. It's just about to done. Yeah, it's done. Absolutely. Now, one more I just need. Now, let's just jump into the React.js. Why I just downloaded and installed the Node.js? Because uh, by using this one, we just can set up the environment of the React. And we are just doing this right now. Now, a few commands of the CMD you need to know. CD, if you just want to go inside the subdirectory of any folder for example for now we are inside the c folder uh, inside the c drive the users folder and inside the users folder there is a folder named Shazeb Kamal and I'm just I just want to go inside a folder which is inside I just want to go inside the folder which is in the Shazeb Kamal and the folder name is CD desktop okay the folder name is desktop by using the CD we just can go inside the folder line break now we're inside we're not inside the C the Shazip Kamal anymore we're inside the desktop now I just want to do something on a desktop I can create I just want to create a folder I can create a folder by right clicking and just going to the new and by clicking on folder but I just want you to familiar with the CMD functions because absolutely you're using it so you need to know some basics a little basics about it now the folder name I'm just making is react application or react tab or anything uh, and because I just want to create a folder, so for creating a folder, I just need to use the MKDIR and then space and the folder name we just want to create React application or app. MKDIR is a command mostly programming languages also uses, like PHP and some other languages. The MKDIR is for creating a folder. Line break, and now I got, a, I got created the folder here. You can see that the React app. Now, I just want to make access inside the reactor app, so I'm just typing the cd um, here, cd space uh, react app, 
line break now i'm inside the react tab now now i just want to make another interesting thing the package.json file and what is the package.json file it is actually the main file we just need now the other thing is we just want to download some plugins for the react and actually we just want to install the react for this folder and other things so uh, first of all what i'm just doing i'm just typing npm init means initializing okay now what is a package package.json file the package.json is actually a file which actually connects the complete project metadata and other information the basic information about the project to control the project project version and other stuff project name project version and other things uh, has been handled by the package.json file so let's just work on it i just type the here yeah, the npm init and by uh, entering it we just got the the package name area now it is just asking for the package name the name will be i can put any name the folder name is react app okay but this is not necessary to make it as react app it, it can be anything okay i'm just typing react app but i can type my name here for the project for the package name however the folder name is react app but it can be anything i'm just typing react app as it is just line break and now it's asking for the version the, ver the very first version must be the 0 0.0 1.0.0 1.0 break the description you can put anything here as a description i'm just typing here this learning react command react js okay by shazab kamal okay line break now the in point you can uh, we didn't make any file yet okay we didn't make any file yet but what what will be the entry point the entry point will be the we can be we can uh, type like index.html index.js the file should be js okay uh, we can type index.js we can type uh, main.js we can type default.js anything i'm just typing index.js for now or let's just make it uh, main.js or okay index.js fine line break now the test command i just do, i just don't want to test anything line break it git repository i just don't want to get at any git repository for now line break it now keywords i'm just putting npm uh this one is just because if you just publish the uh the package so you know the file name in edc now the the npm learn react with the spaces okay line break and now it's asking for the author name the author name is shazabe okay Camel line break now license unlicensed okay cool line break okay now they're just giving us the data that this will be the collection inside the uh, the package.json file for this react app you can see that the errors will be c users shazip Camel desktop react app package.json they are just about to write it okay i'm just typing yes it's cool okay it just created you can see that there there is a file name just open it up go to the edit with notepad plus plus and we just got it here you can see that all the things we just added are there the unlicensed the uh, author name edc all things are there all things now the next step i'm just going to do is to but before just downloading the plugins i just i think i just need to download the web pack so what i'm just doing here npm install again i'm installing something for the npm and just adding space and just the thing I'm just installing is the webpack, space, save, and line break it. Okay. It's just, you can see that fetch metadata in EDC, uh, and all things is going inside this folder, the React tab, and I'm just going to show you how. You can, you will be seeing first, it just needs to be completed, and then there, the data will be added, and also, this file, for now, I'm just canceling, because it will be updated too whatever we just download will be pasted inside the react react app you can see that now the node module if i just go inside you'll be seeing some many files here you can see that continuously you'll be seeing a lot of files you can see that okay this is just happening because of this process which is happening here continuously installing many things okay now there a little thing i just want to clear you that npm warn react app 1.0.0 no repository field no problem it's just a warning that there is no repository field but it nothing with any error so ignore it okay cool now another thing i just want to install is the install just focus just go inside it and you can see that 204 folders for now 204 items i'm just 
uh, installing another thing hey you're the webpack dev server okay now again save it for saving you just need to put the two hyphens in save button save command and line break it okay if you just want to more learn more about it these things you just need to focus on the npm uh, search over the npm how to set up the npm and you'll be getting another commands if you just need them and I'm installing another items if you just go there you can see that uh, it's not the 204 anymore it's 283 for now and it's uh, uh, continuously updating here okay it's done refresh 282 now some more things that just need to download for now inside the same folder and what is that thing Again, we just got two warnings, but no problem because these warnings are not really important to be focused. And what we just need to download for now is to installing the React itself. npm install react space save and line break. Now, I'm directly installing the React for now. It's going on okay the folder you can see that the folder quantity has been updated and react is now inside the folder hi there so guys in this video we're just going to continue from where we've left so again the npm install and now i'm just going to install the we've installed the react but i'm now i'm just going to install the react dom and let's just make it save save line break and now it's going to save it in the same folder you know the folder name it's getting saved yeah now after the in re installing the react DOM, we just need to go to the next one now the time is to install the plugins so npm oh, sorry npm install spec babel core and line break now it's gonna install the babel core in a folder and it's getting installed Fetching data in EDC, okay, it's going cool. Just make it done. Okay, done. Now, the next thing I'm just gonna do is the npm install babel loader and line break again. And now, the next one will be the npm install babel preset react absolutely this one is a very important element very important plugin we just needed it's gonna download it in a minute in a little while you can see that okay done now again the npm install babel preset i'm gonna install the e s 2015 and line break oh sorry i just put it the wrong one by the way it's uh, yeah i know that now make it done okay it's done now absolutely why the provision was not working perfectly because there you can see that the error now there are a few files we just need to create inside the react app I'm just going inside there and just uh, I'm just opening the notepad so the files I'm just gonna make is uh, number one will be the index.html okay now I'm just gonna make another one too. Just going there and just saving it. File the file name will be up. Sorry, JSX. Okay, this one will be the important file. Um, I'm just gonna guide you what is the JSX and then let's lecture. And the third one I'm just gonna make is removing the file name and just putting the kind of uh, real name main.js. Mind break. Save it again. Now this one is a webpack. Webpack the config dot js oh sorry cut this off save it now paste it here because i just want to save it the file name as it is the webpack dot config dot js and save it now all these files are important this one will be the front end and this one will actually be the back end and this one is the main the js file and this one it will be the configuration file for the webpacks So first of all, I'm just putting the HTML here and just going inside this HTML file, the head tag, going down and the body tag. Okay, cover this up and going to the head area again and just putting the title 
and here inside the title we can put anything whatever we want so i'm just going inside the title and i'm just putting something like the react js tutorials or something whatever now i'm not going to put anything for the body because absolutely it's, it's it's only the front end i'm not gonna hard code anything here this will be used for the data and then we'll be just going there for more info we'll be talking about the uh, about the jsx in the next class in the next lecture so for now just simply code whatever i'm coding import react from react and then there i'm just going to add another class actually the first class the class name i'm just putting as app and adding in space extends react dot component this one is actually the very first component of the react i just want to clear you one thing that everything inside the the react considered as a component we'll be talking about the components later on and absolutely you will be needing to understand the components logic because it's absolutely an important thing for the react if it is working on it let's just capitalize the c and then go there call the braces go inside the call the braces render i'm just going to talk about all these things later on about i'm just going to clear these things what are these things but for now just do whatever i'm doing because for now i just want to show you how we can get the result just make it just use it like a function and just go inside the color braces add two color braces after the render and i'm going inside the run and then the return statement open up two color braces sorry the parentheses and just go inside the parentheses and yeah, don't forget to put the semicolon of the parentheses. Go inside it and just make a div. Yeah, this is a logic. I'm just going to guide you what it is. For now, just simply type learn or we are learning React JS. Okay, awesome, awesome. You can see that here we're just uh, using the HTML tags actually jsx works in its way that we just can use the html tags inside the jsx so you actually do not need to learn the jsx a lot more but there are some techniques i'm just going to talk about this later on so what more we just need to do we just need to go very down and just type something like export a small letter export space default app like this now the time is to go to the main.js I'm just going to the main.js and first of all I'm just going to import something now I just want to clear you one thing when we're just talking about the react or the node logics when we just uh, import something if you just want to use anything uh, for example there is uh, a content we've made there is a component we've made inside the app.jsx if you just want to use this outside of the other parts of the application means the main.js or somewhere then we have to first of all we have to export this one okay when we just export this exported this application names class app class here we just exported that now we are able to use this in other parts of the application like uh, the main.js and edc but here you can see that we just imported remember we just installed the npm installed react we installed the react and this one is actually that react class here we are just using and we are just extending if you just know the very basic logic of the classes and the other parts of the so now here we're just using the same logic there we just made a class and we just exported that so now we can use this class there to the main.js and i'm going to use that absolutely hopefully you just got the basic logic but the very first thing is i'm just importing the react i'm just clarifying that this phase is actually the react element so react this is what i just did here import react from react okay react from react okay and line break another thing i'm just gonna import it and now what i'm just gonna import it. if you remember we just downloaded we just installed the react dom tool from the spelling was react dom okay now we're just going down and just making importing another thing now i'm importing this the class we've made here this class we just exported here and i'm just gonna call the class here by importing it okay by importing we'll be able to use the elements of the class import app from now the app is a class and now from the dot here i'm just adding the directory dot 
jsx okay cool now let's go down and a little few things here we just need to do i'm just going to the index.html first here i just need to add a few things but before just guiding you what i'm just going to do here i'm just going to go to index.html and i'm just going to inside the body i'm just making a div here okay inside this div what i'm just doing i'm just uh, adding an id and i'm just going to actually call this id there this that's why i'm just doing this one first and uh, here i'm just calling the id and id name i'm just uh, selecting is app and just going down in here i'm just uh, adding in a script also and why i'm adding this script you know adding in space and src and here single or double quotes whatever you use and there the main dot js okay so this one is actually i'm just calling here oh sorry no here i'm not going to use the index the uh, main dot i'm just going to use the index dot chase now what is the index dot chase it is little tricky but very simple and easy when it just comes to the web packs here i'm just going to configure things actually this is the, the very interesting thing that it's routing things here from there there from here so now you know that here we've added the index.htm index.js file and absolutely we didn't make that file yet but i'm just going to design the webpack.config.js then you will understand what the meaning of this so for now here is the application and this i'm just going to use there and uh, what i'm just doing react dom dot runner you can say dot you can say uh, period or whatever you want i'm just going inside it the application cover this up oh sorry here add this there comma document dot get element by id cover this up and here i'm just calling that app okay the app i just made here this one i'm just calling here sounds everything is adjusted in the main.js i'm just going to the webpack config.js the very important file when we just want to launch the very first hello world application or here what we just put it the we're learning react.js this is actually just like the hello world application i'm going to the webpack.config.js I've already wrote the code for the webpack.config.js because it's not a thing you should learn but I'm just gonna guide you the configuration variable I just made here the very main important element it's an array and here I just added the entry point dot main dot js and there I just want to make a path uh, for output I'm just making the output directly so okay the file name will be the index.js there there the period this one is the file we just didn't make yet but we just called it here and we're just uh, uh, any output we're just actually creating a file index.js the dev server here is an important thing we're just configuring the area you know inline true port 8080 okay you can use any port you just want like 7777777777 or double eight double eight or 8080 whatever and there is a module i'm just adding a loader a test and exclude and loader babel loader just add all these things like that and just uh, uh, a few more things we just need to do we just need to check the work if it's working the application now let's just check it out i'm just going to the notepad uh, sorry the command prompt npm start and line break okay it's just it's just giving some kind of errors i'm just going to check this out the error um present doesn't contain the package.js file okay and uh, there are multiple kind of errors that is showed okay i'm just going to check this one the error actually starts from there <laughs> I, I was just checking the old error but this one is actually the real error the missing script is a start okay i got the meaning I just need to go there I just need to go to the um, I'm just going to the folder the react days folder here is it and uh, I just need to go inside the app.jsx sorry there is the uh, package.json file I'm just opening this one and there in line number seven we just need to delete this test file okay and I just need to add another thing here instead of the test file 
I just need to add the start the webpack dev server hot. I just don't need to test anything right now. Going there and just typing the npm start and running this up and now I just want to see the result. Um, okay, cool. Project is running at uh, localhost 8080. You can see that the server is running now. Localhost 8080. Need to go to the browser. There I'm on a browser. I'm just uh, opening the file localhost and uh, you can see that the 8080 you can see that the react JS tutorials it's there but the other things are not showing what we just need to see the other result we just need to see this one as a result but it's not visible there and I'm just gonna check this out why it is this one is actually visible you can see that the react tutorials you can see that here but the data is not visible if I type anything here this will be visible save it and refresh that you can see that but I just don't want to get the data from this file I just want to get the data from the JSX file, so I'm just going to check this out, the reason why it's not visible there. Something we just did wrong. This is right, actually. So we just need to go to the main.js and... Uh, oh, okay. Here, the get element.id, the G must be small letter. You need to know these things because this is a very basic JavaScript technique. So now I just made it the G a uh, small letter going to the browser again and now you can see that we are learning JSX, uh, JS, sorry, we are learning React.js. Now the interesting part I just want to show you for now, if you just see there, if I just go there and just add some more things or some changes, I just want to show you an interesting thing here. Just focus on this. If I just uh, remove this one and just make it save and you can see that it's automatically updated. You just don't need to refresh the file, okay? I'm just adding the, the data again, react.js and saving it, and now it's updated. This one is an interesting and cool part uh, of the react.js, or actually um, uh, it's because of the local host, we're just running the node.js, but it's working fine. So guys, here in this class, we're just talking about the JSX. What is this? Basically, the JSX is the way a preprocessor which adds the XML in the JavaScript by some easy ways. The JSX has tag names, the attributes, the children's means the sub attributes of uh, the sub tags and EDC, the, the sibling tags, EDC, all the traversing the, of the HTML has the JSX. Now, I'm just going to talk about how JSX works and how actually it just makes things very great and why React uses the JSX. PDW React uses the JSX for templating instead of the general JavaScript method. It's not really important to use the JSX, but actually why we're just using this because it's faster to load and compiling to JavaScript. Also, it's very easy to understand. In fact, you just do not need to learn it because uh, most of the things of the JSX is just like the HTML, the way of the J6 is just like another HTML. That's why I just prefer to use the J6 here. So now some of the elements of the J6 I'm just going to talk about. First of all, you just can add some more elements, some more divs or h ones or uh, the p tags or any other tag. But remember that this one is a container. We just cannot make another tag out of the box here. We just cannot do this one. We have to choose one as a container like this one is a container. now. We can add another tag inside the container like I'm doing for now. For example, I'm just adding another div here and just uh, adding something like uh, a new div and save it and save it and go to the browser. You will be seeing it's automatically updated a new div. Okay, no refresh. Actually, why it's automatically working and why it's just uh, uh, giving us the live results without refreshing because of... Uh, the you know if i just go there heck it does now yeah because of this one the dev the dev server hot just because of this one it's just reloading automatically without refreshing so by the way let's just uh, go there one logic has been cleared that you just cannot simply add another div out of the main container we can add our own variables, uh, our own attributes here, and how we can do that, just setting in space and uh, the attribute name, whatever attribute name we decide, suppose uh, sha attribute or ATR, whatever, equal to, and the value of the attribute like uh, 
hello or value whatever you just want to type in a value you can type okay but one thing you just need to add is the data at the first to just make it a variable coming from the react or the jsx actually so now some more things i just want to teach you uh, if i just delete that this will be looking will look more good because here there is already a hyphen so now how we can add these styles in it if you if just want to add these styles in a jsx we can add the, this by using some easy ways out of the return parentheses i'm just going there and just making a variable this works like that and here we can just add this style uh, we can uh, we can make a variable just like i'm just making a variable named the style and make it an object and just start working in it now do you know the html dom the javascript way to put the css in put to make the css by using javascript way uh, any it is called the dynamic html and how it works suppose if you just want to make the background colorful so you just don't type background color but you type background c capital and color and what is the mean of this oh yeah now this is completed what is the mean of this this is actually called the camel style where the first letter the first the first words first letter will be small and then the second letter is first the second words first letter is capital as you can see and then here put the value for the background color i'm just putting like uh, blue okay so now let's go there and uh, here a line break again and adding another div and this style is going to be added it's the style and there the color braces inside the color braces put the variable name and save it now go to the browser back and refresh it um oh i didn't put anything here i need to type something like uh, hello world and save it now go to the browser you can see that this became in, in the blue color that means it's working fine some more things I'm gonna do here adding a comma adding a line break and then here the color the simple color as white okay white and some other things like uh, the font s capital font size and here I'm just putting like uh, comma and then here uh, I'm just typing 40px and save it now. Go to the browser back and here it became bigger. That means it's working fine. That means the install is working fine and the way making the uh, object using using an object way, the CSS in there, it's working fine. So now some more things about the JSX we still need to learn. Some more beautiful feature of the JSX R. You can also use the JavaScript expressions, JavaScript operators, and other things inside the JSIC. You must need to know the way, the method, how you can do that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to teach you how we can. Here, I'm making another div. Remember that we are still inside the main div. Okay, this one is the main div, and here I'm just doing all things. So there, here, I'm just making the two curly braces going inside the curly braces, and here I'm just putting something like four plus four now the result will be go there and you can see that the eight that means it's working yeah this thing just cannot do any html the plain html and that is not the plain html it is the j6 so boo yeah it's working here you can add the plus sign you can add the divide sign you can add the uh, the product sign multiplication sign and go to the browser you can see that it's working fine four four equal to 16 we just make a product of them and in this way it works so some more things about it you also can put the if else statements in it but not in a general if else statement way but the shorthand way the shorthand if, if else way most of the people will know about the shorthand uh, if else way which is called actually called ternary method let's just make a variable first going there and uh, making another variable whenever we just create a variable it should be out of the return box out of the return statement uh, return parentheses or actually before the return parentheses now another variable and here i'm just putting something like uh, var1 
equal to 8. Okay, cool. Going there and uh, close the braces, going there. First, the statement var1 is equal to 7 question mark if it's equal to 7 then the result should be true other column false okay now save it now go to the browser and you can see that oh there I just didn't get the result oh war one actually okay now go to the browser the result is false okay going there back and just making this uh, if it is 8 then save it now go to the browser back and now it's true now that means yeah the ternary operator is working perfectly and uh, not only this sign you can use any sign anyway here to get the perfect solution that's why dj j6 is awesome and here's the method the comments are actually simple we also can add the comments actually but the way is a little simple but you, we just need to put this inside the code braces and yeah you probably know how to put the comments in any, any programming language like javascript like php like perl ruby and Rail on edc we just added the two flashes and then putting here single line comment absolutely this won't make any error either this won't make any problem go there and you can see that nothing there go down a line break another parentheses and then just doing the same and here this one is actually the what I'm just making for now is the multi-line comment multi line comment okay here to stop this one you can see that what I did it's not necessary to make it stop here you can just uh, add some line breaks and you will be seeing it's working whatever save it now go to the browser nothing here that means it's working fine this is how in really simply the JSX works I hope you leave I hope you understood this thing so guys here in this video we'll be talking about the react.js components so as we discussed before the components are everything in react or everything of the react is called a component okay this class and everything like that we'll be making further will be actually called the component in react.js in this class we'll be actually making a template a way to create a template so what i'm going to do for now i'm going to make three classes three or four classes the header class the footer class the content class and then <clears throat> we'll be only exporting the app class and uh, as you can see that we are, we are already exporting only the app class and then that will make a pair you'll be seeing what i'm just gonna do for now okay so just suppose all this data is a header all these things is a header okay so i'm just gonna make a new class there but before making a new class we need to update it we need to update the content of this class so do we still need this variable okay just remain it as it is I'm just I'm just gonna do a few more things here I'm just uh, running the CMD because I just want to run the server and here I'm just typing npm start as you remember okay oh npm start and line break and okay okay it's just telling that there is no package.json file any uh, in its path in its Shazir Kamal's path means actually we just need to go to again to the desktop yeah desktop and then the folder name was react application and line break it now we are inside the react app folder and now if we just run the npm start then because of the package.json the metadata will be loaded of the server of this uh, whole application now it got there you can see that the project the web pack compiled successfully i'm just going to the browser and here i'm just running that i'm just typing here the local host and line breaking now you can see that we're learning react.js a new dev hello world in edc all this stuff we can just put in to the or why not we just delete all that stuff because it's not as important as it's looking we just can make a new thing this is the header okay 
you know all this stuff so i can also delete that one too so i'm deleting that no problem no problem no problem i'm deleting that one and there then i just need to maintain it and now here i'm just gonna make i'm just gonna edit the class uh, name into hater okay that's cool <clears throat> it's still we're exporting the app default app by the way there is no app for now but i'm just gonna make someone before making anything here, before putting anything here, why not we just go to the browser to check that out, the result, there is nothing. You know, we just put it the, the this is a header, but there is nothing we just can see because the class name is app. Uh, class name should be app because we're exporting the app, but there is no app, and this is the header. I'm just making it, if I just make it an app, then you can see that there will be the result, this is the header, but I'm just making it an header, okay? This is a header class, and there is no header. Also, I'm making another class meanwhile class content extends react dot component okay now pull the braces going inside and just making it runner parentheses pull the braces and going inside and return same thing as we did before the parentheses again now inside the parentheses we are going to put some con like the div or any other thing i'm just putting the div and there i'm just typing this is the content okay in the same way you can do a lot of things you just can make the you know class foot extends react dot component Call the braces there. It should be the capital. The C should be capital. I'm just making it capital now. It's cool. I'm going down and there. I'm just line breaking and just putting the runner. Put parentheses. Call the braces. Go inside and return again. And uh, the parentheses. Going inside the parentheses. And then there. Another div. I'm just making a of. And I'm just putting inside this div. Is, this is the foot okay awesome but there is nothing like the app okay now i'm just gonna do what i need to do i'm just saving it i'm just going to the browser still you can see that there is no result if i just refresh however we just didn't need to be refreshed this page but uh, we did we did that by the way now where's the app here i'm just making a very first class and this class name i'm just uh, putting as app and extends absolutely i'm just gonna add the react as a component here call the braces going inside and render i'm just gonna render it okay again the you know parentheses call the braces inside the call the braces i'm just gonna make the return and the call the braces uh sorry parentheses going inside the parentheses uh, like that and there i need the same i need the same okay cool save it now line break and here what I'm just gonna do for now, I'm just gonna put a simple div, and you will be seeing what I'm just doing. This is the main app. Save it now. Go to the browser, and only the main app will be visible because exactly we're just only exporting this one. If I just export another one, um, you can see that. Hey, done. Save it now. Go to the browser, and nothing you can see that. Okay, this is why because we are, we've already exported the one, we just need to be exported now. What is the way? To make these classes workable here instead of typing this is a main app i'm just uh, going inside and just making some i'm just using some some uh, some tags we've made the, some tags we can use these classes as tags and i'm just going to use them here i'm just typing in a capital h okay header save it now go to the browser okay and save it there is a header okay you got the header okay now line break as i said when you just made a class you just made the class name as a new tag and anything which is inside the class will be will become the part of the tag so there here i'm just typing the content okay in this way and save it now go to the browser you will be seeing this is a content go there and line break and then the footer There is a folder. This is a folder. Okay. Now everything you just put inside the, the single tag, a single class will become a part of the tag, and then inside the single 
class you can put you know that the the javascript expressions you can you know that ternary operators means the if else conditions and you also can put the uh styles you know whatever you just want to but you can so this is how we just make these things happen so guys here in this class we're just talking about some more things about this react.js basically this method is actually called the stateless method the stateless examples they are for example here we just made the hater here we just made the content here we just made this footer so they are stateless or you can say just like uh, static methods so i'm just gonna talk about the state for now i'm just gonna talk about this straight state means the dynamic a way a dynamic way what the mean of the dynamic way it's, it's just like a variable suppose if you just have a water i'm just gonna give you this very simple example i just uh, heard a few days ago about the react over the internet and i just like that too much that just like in a normal life we have states in the react we have a state suppose we have the water so water is one thing but if you just uh, uh, increase the freezing point it will be freezed into the ice if you just uh, uh, the high up the temperature it will be the gas or became the solid or became the water again okay at the absolute hot it will be become the gas and at the zero it will become the solid means the ice but things will be same border which will be changing its uh, shapes or its states means a same thing is changing its states and forms okay but what is the key point the key point is the temperature which we are increasing or decreasing means it's a dynamic way a single a same thing changing its states changing its shapes because of the temperature so here you can see that this is the hard coding this is the hard coding but if we just talk about the uh, variables you know the same value the same uh, variable changes its uh, value but there we're just talking about the state a very important or, or someone says it's just like a heart of the react.js so i'm just gonna work on it so for now what i'm just gonna do i'm just gonna delete all these things you'll be get the coding by the way i'm deleting for now and what i'm just doing i'm also deleting the upper codes because exactly i just do not want them or for now we just can leave it to be deleted the renderer but before the renderer we just need to add some uh, new things the constructor just use it as a function for now like that constructor function but i'm just going to talk about the constructor and also the thing here i'm just calling props talking about the props so on and here i'm just using the super keyword and there i'm just putting the props okay just going down and now there the game start this dot state if you ever know about the javascript this keyword this means actually this keyword or the this element we're talking about or we are there okay suppose if we are on the uh, the hater so so this means this or the content if you are on content so this means this instead of this content instead of this content or instead of this content okay this is very simple equal to and there i'm just gonna make the object and there i've just made that i'm gonna put three things the header and the content for the header i'm just putting the same as we put it before and what we've put it actually there will be nothing as we've deleted and updated the page so now i'm just gonna put things like uh, this is the header okay we just text it like that but it won't be printed want to check it on a browser go to the browser and check this out here and there is nothing you can see that going back to the notepad and adding a comma and line break and then here the content okay the same thing you know how to use the object you need to know if you just want to work on the react.js you just need to know the basic javascript this is our oh, spelling mistake uh, this is the content whatever this spelling you have you can put and then i'm just going to do the last one and again i'm just doing same thing the footer let's just put the content for the footer and here i'm just typing this is the footer okay save it now still there will be nothing we just put it three things but there is nothing so what i'm just gonna do here because here in a previous way so 
there are no classes anymore there are the objects elements so object properties so i'm just going to call the properties but the way will be different so these are the tags i'm going to delete the tags and what i'm just going to do for now the tags so the very first tag i'm going to use here i'm just going to call the you know i'm going to call the diff for now and here i'm just putting things like the h1 or i can put line breaks or anyway h1 in a previous example what we was doing we was designing all things at the top at the in classes in a header class we were designing the complete header in a photo class we were designing complete photo or we was able to do that but here in the same class we are doing the thing and here if i just type the header and save it and go to the browser and you'll be seeing the header there that means it's working and there is no error at all but here i'm just going to change the way what i'm just going to do here the call the braces going inside it and just calling this dot stay dot header and save it now go to the browser and now you can see that this is a header now this means i'm talking about this this class okay just focus on what i'm telling this means i'm talking about this class okay the class app and the state of this class this is the state of this class okay and the property which called hater just put, pick this here and paste it that means now anything which is inside this hater will be there that means it's actually a cool plan i'm going down making another div and here i'm directly putting the content without the h1 and just adding the cool braces and this dot state dot now what more i'm just going to do is content save it and duplicate it in there i'm just going to put the footer footer save it now go to the browser and refresh it now the content oh actually we just do not need to refresh when you're talking about talking in the react so you can see that this is a content this is a photo that means it's actually working in an awesome way so what more required for now this looks a little short bw and the other thing is you can see that the whole things are still same the index.html has nothing but actually this is the front page and it's coming to the browser if you just go there if i just type the index.html you can see that this one is the same page how we just put the index.html or no but this one is a major page the view page and that is actually the page where we're just putting the content and this is delivering the content to the index.html in the app way and this one is actually coming from the node.js folder node uh, modules folder from the react folder this is actually the uh, this is coming from there node modules so going back there and uh, what more i'm just doing the main.js here was the main.js you know the logic of the main.js already the same thing the webpack config the webpack uh, config js you know how it works and the package.json which is actually not necessary for you to learn for now here in this video we'll be talking about some more things about the react.js so we'll be talking about the props as we discussed in a previous class so what is a prop what are the props and how we can use them basically it's just like the props uh, is just like the state but there is a very simple difference that the props is immutable whenever you just want to immutable data you just use the props and how you can use that and how you can make the, the props workful i'm just gonna work on it for now i'm gonna delete all these things first of all also there are two ways to use the props uh, or many ways but for now i'm just gonna guide you the two ways so first of all i'm gonna delete this uh, constructor way delete that that one and yeah it's cool but there we're not gonna call the props uh, the state anymore we're gonna call the prop let's just call it the props okay and here i'm just calling the props again and at the very bottom i'm just doing the same the props okay now save it and now just go to the browser to confirm that if it's working and refresh that you know that only we are getting the hey that the title that means the server and the page is working fine but we're not getting any result here so now i'm going to get the result actually just like the previous way we, are, we just need to define the props somewhere so for this thing i'm just going to the main.js and i'm now going to define the props inside the react dom there 
I'm going to define that. I'm going to guide you how we can do that. Remember the name of the props. We just uh, put it the header, the content, the footer. First of all, I'm just designing the header. The spelling must be clear and must be same. Okay. Exactly. This one, I'm just going to make here. Okay. Inside this tag here, just like an attribute. Okay. I'm just uh, putting the data as an attribute in a main.js and this will be called in the app.jsx app and absolutely app, all the data from the app.jsx app will be gone to the index.html so I'm just gonna do that here for now header equal to and here I'm just typing this is the header save it go to the browser and there you can see that this is the header that means it's working oh yeah here if you just go back you can see that there we just put it this dot props dot header there is no header or the content like this is header we just type sound is working fine now the time is to put the content and i'm going to put the content for now in a very simple manner i'm just going to the uh, main.js again and just like i'm adding another attribute i'm just typing the content same is spelling don't forget that the spelling must be same as we put it here the content c-o-n-t-e-n-t -E same spelling here and equal to with the same manner you can put these spaces like that if you just want to make it more clear and more beautiful so there i'm just typing this is the content awesome save it now go to the browser you'll be seeing the content here that means yeah it's working it's working fine and then if you just want to add another one the footer and uh, equal to and putting the uh, putting things like uh, this is uh, save it now and go to the browser back there is a browser you can see that this is a footer that means all things are working now what do you want to apply with this content this is a simple content but what do you want to apply to them to this content I'm just going to the app.jsx and I just want to apply the div here I just want to apply the you know you can see that uh, the uh, h1 tag the div again and div again if you just want to apply some kind of specific uh, special thing you know how to add these styles and you can add these styles so guys this is a very basic way to work on props but i'm going to guide you some more things about the props we're just going to combine the props and the state into each other so First of all, what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to make a detailed application. I'm going to use that. Actually, it will be a little long, but I'm going to use that for some reasons. That's why I'm just teaching you. The very first step will be the same as we did before uh, for the states. So here, what I'm just going to do, opening the constructor component here, constructor, parentheses, colder braces going inside the colder braces, and here, super function parentheses and here inside I'm just calling the props going down and there I'm just gonna call the props again props and there the same thing we did before this dot state okay equal to close the braces going inside the close braces and header dot sorry no more dot because it's absolutely it's an object so this is the header the footer or before the footer I'm just going to put the content and here is the content this is the content okay header and the content and I just need to add the comma another comma and the footer and uh, you know what about it this is the footer save it and then just remove that line and just go down hey I'm just gonna do a very basic thing I'm removing that and just making it a state and then here state again and this one as this state again you know things are really simple to do state again save it if you just go to the browser you'll be seeing the same result because it's uh, it's working fine and we just apply the same old method the state method but I'm just gonna update it a little bit I'm gonna design all them in a different classes okay I'm gonna design them on a different classes so here I'm just simply making a, another thing 
if you remember the way header the the proofs way header make the h capital header and go there and just make this h as capital 2 and this c as capital 2 this f is capital 2 and i'm just going down and just making this a tag but because of the capital h you know that it's not a simple tag okay and then you know that we just need to put the data in a in a very simple common way by the attributes and i'm just going to call the attributes as well a little update here this required i'm just making this h as a small this c as a small and this f as a small the reason because these h is this h is not coming from there i'm I, i'm just going to update a little bit this area header or props header okay it's also a little changed props header equal to and i'm just going to put the data here the you know this dot state dot header now this header is actual result this header is coming from there okay very simple this header is coming from there okay but we're just telling that uh, the value of the props header will be the state header okay and there i just added the header that means i just need to make some classes for this header and in the same way i'm duplicating duplicating and just making this the props content okay and just making this content and that one is the footer okay this one will be the footer and there absolutely just needed to be updated content and there the footer save it and now what more uh, is required and now the further part i'm deleting all these things or just make them in reserve so how i'm just going to do that i'm just going to go there and i'm just going to make the first i'm just making the ending comment sign then i'll, I'll be making the starting one there is a reason behind doing this because if I just make the starting comment first, that it will cover the old text, then it will be really hard to understand where it's ending. So by the way, I'm just going out of this class, and here I'm just making a new class, and now. Now, what is the name? The name was header. What is the name of the tag? The tag name was header, header, and x was capital, so make it, make the h capital, okay? And I'm going to do the same techniques, extends react dot component in its way and just the code braces you know the rule and then here what I'm just gonna do more now the runner you know the rule how it works and then the parentheses and call the braces and going inside the code braces and what I'm just gonna return in the runner return and the parentheses again in its way and then inside the parentheses, let's just make the uh, put the semicolon and go inside the parentheses. And here, the div one first, or as you know, that this one was the main div, just cut that off and paste it here. But now, here, I'm not gonna use the state anymore because absolutely it's not going to the state way, it's gonna go using the props header and just save it out and just uh, line break a little. Okay, cool now another class now the next one was if content extends react dot component call the braces go inside the call the braces runner parentheses again call the braces and go inside the call the braces return okay awesome the parentheses again cover this up and go inside the call the braces and add the next thing here just cut that off and paste it i'm gonna guide you the logic behind it okay what i'm just doing for now the class again if you just want to see the result in a browser go to the browser and now you can see that there is no result for now you're getting but i'm just gonna guide you how it will work later on next class is footer extends react dot component 
Okay, going inside again and Renner again, Colib Pranesis and Colibra, he says, going inside it and return. Pranesis and cover the seven, going inside it and uh, pair the div. Now I'm just gonna cut the last one and paste this here. And here I'm just putting something like props. Footer, save it. Oh, wow. Actually, this one should be the props footer too. But the content, oh, sorry, not the crop footer, but the crop props content. But there are a little thing that, you know, we've used this content and this footer and this header there already. We've used that, okay? So I'm not going to use that again. I'm just going to read that. And if you remember the way to call the props, Instead of the state, we just need to type the props. Okay, this one is the way. Go to the browser, and yeah, we have some mistakes, and we just need to sort sort that out first. Remove that one too, and go there and the props dot, and then remove that too. I'm gonna do the same things there, and then props dot. Now, if I just go to the browser to check this out, uh, still there is no result, so I just need to find out the problem. I just need to find out something I, I did wrong. So, footer, I'm just gonna match the footer for now. Yeah, footer is matching. Content is matching there, but not there. Okay, I'm just gonna add the T and save it out. And now go to the browser again, and now you can see that the result. This is a header, this is a content, and this is a footer. Okay, that's cool. So, this one, I can delete for now. Save it, now you can see that it's working, it's sharing, wow. Oh, okay. Why the result here is uh, uh, is able to be shown because now there are th this area is not the simple HTML way. Here you can put the HTML things, okay, not there because you can see that there I'm just using the classes only. Now you can see that it's normal for now. So now the logic behind it. First of all, we've made the simple application class and there I just use the props you know the way of props to make it now we just use a state way inside the props uh, inside the constructor props and here hater con and footer any object object way okay then we just rendered them but here we just use the props method hater props hater this dot state dot hater okay now I'm telling that whenever someone calls the props hater because you're just using the props way. So whenever someone calls the props hater, then the result of the state should be shown. And there I, I just told this that state that content, I'm just telling that props content, this should be shown. When anyone calls the state uh, props content, then actually I'm just telling that there is this state, but when anyone calls the props, then it should be shown, not on any time by the way then here later on we just made a class and there we just call the props uh, by using the props method we just call the props header props son in a props header there is nothing in props header but the this dot state dot header logic is pretty simple you need to practice out practice this out three or four times if you just don't understand because absolutely it's a trick to understanding the combination or the gear system means this works for that that works for that like that whole react depends on this way these ways now here i just opened another application app.js previously we just worked on it this one was a stateless example okay now the difference between the stateless example you know that here we're using the same classes in its way and we're just calling them here uh, in a class way but the problem is that here we just need to be this one or this one or this and mean the whole classes okay but there, we do not need to update the classes, only the content, which is actually at the very top. We just need to update, and it will be working by seconds. Like, we just update this one. I just put a small edge there and save it. Now, go to the browser. You can see that the result has been updated. However, it's showing props header, okay? And props header has a state header, and the state header's content is there. That means it's a little sh short. Looks longer, but just like the state lets, unlike the state lets, 
you just need to update the content from the props okay so guys we just need to update the states for this we'll be talking about some more things i'm just going there just uh, after the import react from react element so now i'm just gonna make some new applications basically i'm just gonna talk about some event how we can use the events in the reactor chase and some components element some component api elements like set state and some like that so just move on i'm making a class first class and space and then you know extends and just before the extend i just need to type the uh, something like app and what is the app i can change this app and then i just need to change this application which i'm just exporting then absolutely i just need to update this one and some other things like that so by the way i'm just going there simply react dot component okay now go inside let us complete the class i'm just going inside and then here you know I'm, i just need to make the, the constructor first oh sorry spelling mistake okay done let just go inside now inside the constructor i'm just going to construct the thing just after the constructor you know that there will be the render function which will render the results so i've made that too okay I'm going to the constructor first and then also in this uh, for this application this making here i'll need another function too so now i'm just going to make something productive for now so just be focused on what i'm doing i'm going to use the super keyword you know very first down i'm just going down and there again the way the same way this dot state dot state and the value i'm just going to put for the this dot state for now is a little different I'm just making do call the braces going inside the call the braces and then here data equal to now sorry uh, this will be the ob you know that this is an object and this will be the uh, object property but I'm just putting an array inside the property so now inside this object there is an array okay fine but this array is actually an empty array that means why we use this square brackets in JavaScript we use this five brackets when we just want to add a new array instead of typing things like new array okay this looks a little big and yeah absolutely this one is more lightweight so we use this one okay all right this just means that i'm just making a new array with this data and actually this new array has no data so absolutely we're gonna add the data later in this array now go on just after that i'm just gonna use the bind method to bind the values this value i'm gonna bind this value but before that i'm just gonna make a function uh the function name will be state handler okay this is a function i'm, I'm just making for now. first of all i'm just gonna make a variable inside it and the variable name will be state or yeah it's state okay or for more specifically i'm just putting this as item and here i'm just putting the value as or the the state okay fine now i'm going down i just found this uh, whole application uh, over the internet somewhere and i just uh, found this really interesting that's why i'm just guiding you this and then here i'm just making uh, another variable and this will be the data array and the mean of this i'm just going to call this dot state dot data okay i'm accessing to this data array here and it's saving the results in its data array okay i'm going down and then some new functions like i'm just typing data array and i'm assigning some function like the javascript dot push function which is specifically for the arrays which actually can add uh which actually adds new item to the array okay so there i okay that's kind of cool now the really important thing and the turning point of this function now you know that i'm talking about uh, there is an item uh, which has the state okay or you can say something like okay the state is cool and then here you can see that i'm just asking for the data array inside that i'm just calling this dot state dot data means i'm just accessing to this array okay now this one is this one has some data okay and what i'm just doing here i'm just uh, pushing some new item which is actually the state to this one okay now uh, by default it has no value but when we just push the data 
it will have the state then if you just push again it will have a, another the state data means it will have the data continuously that's an awesome thing but I'm just gonna do some more things for now now the turning point here I'm going down and uh, I'm just asking for a new this dot set state this is actually the turning point and actually what it does this set state it actually, uh, I'm just doing inside and I'm just putting the curly braces and actually what it does, the set state does, it actually updates the components data. This is a specifically uh, feature of the set state that it just updates the company data. So I'm just going to update the company data for now and here. Data. And inside the data, I'm just putting the data array, which now has the latest item, okay? It will be updating the set state will be updating the data continuously so now we can just proceed to the next the next step is something really interesting i'm just going to make a div now but before the div you know that we need to do something more the return function return parentheses and going inside the parentheses okay and just cutting this off pasting this there oh come on okay i'll paste it going inside it and now there I'm just making another div okay and you know that I'm here I'm just putting something like uh, inside the curly braces because absolutely you know that I'm just gonna put something JavaScript -y. so we need to open up the curly braces to put that up this dot state dot data okay this will work it should be shown in the browser if I just go to the browser but I just need to add some more things so for now I'm gonna go to the uh, CMD. I'm just gonna run the CMD because uh, I just need to run up the Node.js first. So I'm just um, going to the specific folder, desktop, and you know that React and the line break. Oh, sorry. CD React and there. Now it will be. What the heck happened here? Let me try this again. React tab. Okay. I was just putting the wrong name. This is not the React, not the React or slash it Z React application. Now I just need to run the npm, npm start and line break it. Now it's gonna run the server. Yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, compile successfully. There you can see that it's empty is an empty thing. You can see that there is nothing we can see. Now I'm gonna go to the notepad and uh, I'm going down and I'm just making the div. Uh, I'm just making the button so here is the button I'm just making for now okay going inside the button adding some features now I'm adding the event and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that how by using the events we just can update the state of the component on click you must know the JavaScript because you're just working on react.js which is actually the framework of JavaScript so the on click is an event of JavaScript which actually works and how it works I do not think that we just need to talk about a lot about events and uh, about the basic events uh, the basic logic of how it works we'll talk about uh, it in the next lecture but for now what on click does I'm just defining you a little bit that when you just click anywhere the event or specifically the button you're just telling this will work so there I'm gonna make something like this dot state dot data okay now on click i'm just running this one and here i'm just typing click here to update save now go to the browser refresh that click there and nothing happens that means something's wrong we did a little thing we just forgot here i just told you that i'm gonna add something more to the constructor but i just forgot to add in this dot state handler okay this state handler equal to I'm gonna bind this manually to this state handler. This dot state handler dot bind this. Okay, awesome. All good. Save it. Go to the browser and there click on uh, click on repeat. It's still not working. That means I just need to check that out. Something's wrong. Still, I'm gonna check all the I'm gonna check all the codes here. The super state, this state handler, this state data. Oh, I see. This should be like that state handler. Yeah. 
because on click I'm just running the function this dot state handler I'm just calling this dot state handler okay then it will be updating I'm just calling this function just focus on it this dot state handler I'm just calling this dot this state handler okay and this is actually running this function I'm continuously calling when I whenever I did, I'm just clicking on on click uh, on this button and uh, this is uh, actually calling and this fun this line is actually statement is calling this function which is actually making all these things work out and we are just getting the result just go there and click on here to update click here to update you can see that it's updating that means yeah it's working perfectly so guys here in this video we'll be talking about some more things about the form when we just come uh, to the on click event we just came to the on click event then there are a lot of different events we're going to use in the next class but for now i just want to clarify something about the uh, about the form so let's just talk about it just suppose here you can see that when i just click on the click here to update there i'm just getting the data the state or whatever data i've just wrote here i've written here in the item i'm just getting there so what if I just add another thing, another form element of if I just add the uh, input type and I'm just going to put it as text and then here on change, okay, and equal to and there I'm just putting the same thing, this dot state handler, okay, cover this up and go out and then here, what more I'm just going to do, I'm just going to cover this up in its way, okay, save it. Now go to the browser, you can see that there is a thing. If you know about the on change, what is the on change? It means if I just change anything inside this text, for now it has nothing, but when I just click here and I type anything like A, S, or I, even I remove that as I'm getting the new things. But if I just type my name, Shazay Kamel, now you can see that there are a lot of text I got, but actually I wanted this text to be there, but it's not. Reason there i'm just simply getting this event uh, this state this dot state handler to be here in a content okay actually this dot state handler is actually i'm just calling this state handler and uh, it's just binding with this function and here it has the item and then it's just uh, you can see that um, it's just increasing a new item after every item after every click or whenever i just call it and uh, it's using the set state way for updating the content okay cool but how to pick the data from there there is a very simple and very logical thing when it comes to JavaScript you need to know the basics of the JavaScript here I'm just using any alphabet like E E means event I'm just gonna talk about the event but I'm just typing E only and then uh, later what more I'm just gonna do is now there I'm doing a lot of things a lot of things but for now I'm just gonna ignore that because absolutely I'm not gonna use this one okay and I'm just gonna uh, ignore that one too because I'm not gonna increase any item I just want what I just uh, wrote there I just want to be the place to be the place okay I just want it there whatever I just write there okay that's cool so then I even don't want this one because I'm not gonna uh, get any kind of a state data like this one. I'm not gonna do anything like that, but what I'm just doing Here instead of the data array, I'm just Commenting this one and I'm just adding a new simple thing going down in this dot set the state the same function I'm gonna use and the same method I'm gonna apply and there inside this I'm just going and I'm just calling the data again and in the front of the value of the data you know that here is the E this is coming from there actually the data I'm just putting there is coming through there this is a very basic very basic logic of the JavaScript and the events that whenever you just type here the data it just comes here in a variable I'm just getting the data in a variable of e and then here e dot target dot value means whatever was targeted with this event the event we just used the on change okay uh, what the value of that thing okay the value will uh, the value can be anything I'm just doing there and I'm just typing here a now you can see that I'm removing and it's removing I'm typing my name it's getting my name without any single second you can see that without getting a single second it just giving me the result means it's just picking the value of the targeted event okay and just putting it into the data and there this is the data and absolutely 
it's getting showed by there. The this dot state dot data 